<laughs> Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board on June 5th, 7 10. 7.10 p.m. at the Deerfield Town Hall, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. On our agenda tonight is uh, to review minutes of the previous minute meeting, take any public comment. Our old business is to review our Franklin Regional Council of Governments agreement. Uh, under new business, we have the moving forward with the next phase of the Sugarloaf condo project. We're going to look at the uh, resurfacing project on Route 5 and 10 that Mass DOT is doing. And we potentially are going to have some discussion about 707 Greenfield Road, preliminary discussion on plans for a new business, and then have a discussion about affordable senior housing. Any other, and any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting, and then we'll set a date for the next meeting. Anything else we should have on the agenda or any changes to it? I don't think so. Good. Um, so we, do we have minutes? Yep. Right there to, to your, there you go. So May 8th, we had a short meeting, actually. Very short. Oh, no, it's because I wasn't here. I was here, Kip. Max and Paul, so me, Paul, and Max can probably have something to say about these minutes. Um, can we vote them in three? Yeah, is yeah. that all right? Yeah, as long as it's a majority of the court. I had uh, one question, that, but here it was the guest, the, the Saunders Witz Lessie. That's, I didn't, I don't know if I spelled it right, or uh, isn't he the guy that had the property? Yeah. Is that how he spells his uh, name? Well, hopefully that was on the, I don't think I have it anymore, but was it on the application? I mean, we're going to ask, so okay. we'll go back just, and double check it. Just so that we'll have to double check that. All right. W-H-I-T-T-L-E-S-E-Y. Lessie. Is Lessie. that right? Okay. Thank and it's know. Saunders, S-A-U-N-D-E-R-S. Okay, good. Okay. Just trying to read my notes and I wasn't clear total. I know the maid was. We need some. Oh, look at that! Yeah, but the peer review, the uh, the computer. Likes knitting girl. And on number three, Pat quoted. What do you think that number is supposed to be? Two hundred or two thousand? Two thousand. Sorry. Hmm. That's more important. Well, this is short, but. Very mm -hmm. efficient meeting. Yep. Do we have any discussion about the minutes? Other than those. Just a couple of typos. And yep. the two, that, yeah, 2000. Yeah. You want to make a motion? Um, I'll, yeah, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. And second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain? 301. Three, zero, zero, one. And Max, you seconded it, is that yes. right? <laughs> is that who seconded it? Yes. 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 Okay. The only one we don't have it. a lot of choices. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So it's, is, it, is it correct there, guys? Yes, it is correct. Okay, good. Nice job. Okay. <clears throat> So at this point, I like to we like to give the public a chance to to ask a question or raise any comments they have on anything that's not on tonight's agenda. Is anybody here? Does anybody have something to ask or say about things that are not on tonight's agenda? Hearing none, we'll move on to what's on the agenda. Uh, FERCOG agreement. I don't have the exact, um, yeah, unless it's in here. But the idea is that we, uh, we need to re-up on every July 1st, their fiscal year goes, well, it's our fiscal year too, is mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have a technical assistance. Um, so I did talk to uh, 
Pat Smith about it, and we do want to do another contract. We weren't quite sure what amount to put in there. Um, s some of her work gets paid by the applicant, so that's not so much, but it's the work that she does on, uh, if we need help with zoning board issues, uh, bylaw issues, mm -hmm. things like that. It has, I think last year it was 15, and we had to increase it. And she recommended um, 2,000 more at yeah, it's in her letter last last month. But I know um, for for the current fiscal year, yeah, and so then five thousand for the next year just to be closer to to real money. Well, so that we wouldn't have to go back because we don't what doesn't get used doesn't get spent. It's not that it's budgeted but not spent. Well, the other thing is it's it's um like we did not ask for much at the town meeting, so our budget this year is not that much. It went I, down. It went, it went down. down, but what we. Our contract with her is, is that amount of money plus any other money we get from an applicant that goes to Deerfield, right. then we have to pay them. So right. it's, it's, it's still, so our contract with them can be more than, and um, I think we would want to phrase it up to, 5, up to a certain amount. And then if we need to increase it halfway through the year because we have a lot of action, we can, then we do, can that. do that. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything. So this year was in was front of me, um, 3,500 ultimately. We started at 15, we added two. No, 15,000, I think. I thought it was some. Um, no. It was more than 3,500. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that, um, Fairness. don't we just have to vote it when we pay it, rather, or do we vote it before, for the beginning of the year? I don't so know. actually, so here's an amendment for this year that ends June 30th of this year is um, between July 1st, 2016 um, and now it was 15,000 and we're looking to amend it another increase it by another 5,000 to go up to $20,000 20, gotcha. okay. for this year ending June 30th. Then we'll need another one starting July 1st. And again, this is only um, so she, she. So we will we, have done twenty thousand by the end of this by the end of June. No, we'll do, have done seventeen by yeah, the end of this June. Seventeen. Seventeen. What, what she was recommending, just looking out, is that we and we had a big year. So that if we don't spend it, we don't spend it. Is that correct, or is that not correct? Mm-hmm. So the actually, amount, it, actually, didn't didn't we decide at the thing that we we just recommended because the selectmen have to sign it. We don't. Um, we don't sign the. The chair of the Deerfield Select Board signs this, but they're looking to us for for, for guidance. For guidance. Basically not. So what this amendment is, the total amount of the amended contract is up to twenty thousand dollars. So that was for this past year. So now mm -hmm. we're looking at next year, um, but next year we could probably just do it the same, same. Do fifteen, and then if we need to increase it, we can. Yeah. Not a big deal if right. something comes up. Yeah. Right. All right. So okay. I'll. Um, so I'll follow through with that because I don't have the exact uh, uh, contract in front of me, but basically we just need to be able to pass that on to the select board that they should sign it. So. And there is, I will say, there is some discussion in the town, um, in the administrative unit in the select board about um, what, what can town staff do versus what we need to hire outside staff for. Right. And that might change over the next three, six, nine months. And as it changes, we can, okay, you know, use yeah. fur clog services more or less. So, what we usually have it for is not anything that I. It's right, it's not for general administrative. It's for more specific things. So, all right. All right so new business is um, so the uh, Sugarloaf Condo project was approved, and we had some conditions and that's what we want to look at what are the next steps um, for that and I see um, some representatives from the Sugarloaf condo project here um, but I don't see our attorney here do you know if so the attorney has approved the documents and then I, I saw her emails about an hour ago, and I don't think I kept up with that. So hopefully we can. Do we have a sign-up sheet for guests tonight? We have them on our phones, John. Yeah. 
wrote that note down? Wendy? Oh. Can we can we use that and pass that around with a pen to yeah. sign yep, in? Yep, 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 got it. So let me, Wendy was on a lot of these emails. Um, maybe we'll go get her and see if she can. I thought those covenants would be. Uh, yeah, and her, she's in her she's we had two. We're two easements we're talking about, right? Are we talking about uh, a covenant and a road maintenance agreement, which yeah. were both yeah. conditions on the subdivision approval? And the phasing plan. And the phasing plan was the other. Is she able to come out, Rachel? I printed, a, I printed one from a couple of days ago, but you guys have, um, you talked to our attorney since then? Yeah, I have not talked to her since the version you printed out, no. I had drafted both documents and had sent it to her for review. She had redlined them um, and I had accepted her changes without any further edit. <clears throat> when I went to print them, she had, uh, an earlier version had included a reference to having the mortgage holder, a bank, assent to it. In this case, there is no bank at this time. Uh, and in the reference that she had included, she had um, referenced Middlesex County and Ashland Bank, neither of which apply. Uh, and again, there is no mortgage at this time because we haven't purchased the land. Uh, so I, I simply took her approved version and removed that language. I also saw that the word certificate in the second paragraph had been uh, incorrectly spelled, so I corrected that. And also there were only four signature lines, so I included seven with the hopes we'd have a full board. She's copying it. I'm correcting it. Correcting it. Copying it. And then the road utility easement, hadn't, that, that was as finalized by council and approved. Approach Mr. Waitner. Uh, is, is Wendy coming out here? She was just out here. I, I know. I was hoping she was going to sit with us. Oh, okay. I was just, I didn't know because I don't want to get that. Is this your pen, Rachel? Yep. I just gave Yeah. Yep. I did have a quick question. Um, about all the things that we approved were under your old name, 
I know you sent us a document at some point saying that it's, you've changed it to ra ragus. Sugar spelled backwards, we couldn't get sugar, so it's ragus. Oh, That's how thank it you. I didn't, that, okay. So, so I'm not sure how that, does that have any impact on us or? I think the, or the documents that were signed actually say DBA and care of, so Futures Unlimited and Regus were on all of them. We had uh, Pat do that before they were approved. All right. So it has, so it, it makes the to reference to both because right. all yeah. three names are Mr. Whiteman, Futures Unlimited, and, and Ragus are all referenced yeah. on the uh, approval. All right. And it it yeah, is my good. goal to consolidate everything under Ragus at some point, and we'll make sure that's done. Yeah, with and your, uh, I think a lot of that doesn't have so much to do with us as it does make sure your legal documents are, are held up. So the LLC hadn't been formed at the time we started, and right. the surveys were done, so it's right. created some. Wendy, our town administrator, can you, are you, are you, have you kept up on this better than maybe we have over the past week or two with our town council? Uh, this particular yes. Just watching them fly by and proofreading them for error, but not for uh, legal uh, matter. All right. Well, I want to make sure that our, yes, that our town council did, uh, yes. in fact, uh, uh, did. approve them. I kind of did this. Talking about um, how that did go back. Actually, yeah. Forth. Thanks. How that, you know, I saw that going back and forth, and it's the same uh, substance basically that council, our council, offered, and then there were some typos, and we were fixing that. So I have a um, email from our attorney Lisa Mead. I am fine with these documents. This is as of June first, so last Thursday. Oh. Um, and then instructing. The applicant, you need to get on the agenda to have the board execute the documents and accept your executed document. You can then record them and provide proof of the same to the board. Um, so my, I just want to make sure we've got the latest documents, I guess, is part of it. So that's what you just printed out? Yeah, she uh, had it all substantively. And is that what she last yeah. said? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so just to, uh, just to make sure everybody on the board and the public is okay. is clear, there's what, a what time? there's a road she utility now, easement. She sent something after that, but then we saw some things and corrected that, and right. we're I believe we're set. All right. So the road utility easement is agreement and declaration of covenants as to road maintenance mm -hmm. on an agreement relative to stormwater maintenance, and that is. Uh, have a date on it between the um, the owner and the town, right? And does the state have anything to do with that? No. Yeah. No, this is all internal roads, not not. Oh, okay, just internal. Okay. Yeah. Right. John, do you need me? I'm at my computer. I'm in your room on the microphone. I also just say my name. All right, so just the, I guess the only other, so that's, I just, again, our attorney's not here, and just so all board members know that I can accept these, an email from her um, as making us feel good that we can execute these documents, I guess. She's reviewed them. Uh, she offered the language. Yeah. went back and forth. We met, we had some typos, but that was it. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. So, um. So actually, I don't have a copy of that then. Do you have a clean copy of the easement? Yes, and that hasn't been touched. That's Right, so that's, so this, that's the one that I got here, and again, from Lisa, me, their attorney, she changed the word plan. Uh, in the, yeah, I think the plan reference, the, the, the word plan. Oh, she capitalized it, I think, or something. You should, I don't know. Yeah. So we're signing two agreements. Yeah, it looks like she just capitalized the word plan because it's deleted, but it's but it's there. So it's um, and there was another typo or something. Um, and she had set up a structure where if the assessments weren't paid, that the town would be able to lien the lots. I think was that that was all in that draft that right. she approved, and that we accepted. And so, um, oh. So the other thing that we did, uh, and so Pat Smith actually looked at these two, and the thing that caught her eye was that, um, are we referencing the right plans? These, 
future owner of lots of Definitive subdivision plan of the Sugarloaf, of the condominiums at Sugarloaf surveyed for the futures unlimited by Daniel Warner dated December 15th, 2016. Um, so that's the last survey, I guess is what that's saying. Correct. Um, but that's not the plan that was approved. And that's what I don't have in front of me. Somewhere do we put um, the date, the, the a plan that we approved was more recent, I think. What's on the covenant? Yeah, it, it, on both of these documents, it talks about the plan dated December 15th. Do you have the one that, do you have the date that we approved I it? See it? I just hear them. It's just strange. The survey plan is what will be recorded at the Registry of Deeds, and we'll reference the survey lots by lot number. And then you have the definitive subdivision approval, which has already been recorded as well. Right. So those are two separate things. And within the subdivision approval, there's a copy of the survey plan, I believe. I, I don't want to state that without. No, there's a reference to it. There's a reference to it. Do you have any of our decisions, the uh, final decision there about what the plan date is? Um, yeah. Let's see if I've got so the minutes got, here. We kept calling them drafts, and then at some point we came up with another plan right. date. I thought it was in March. Sure. I gave one already to them. Yes, I did. Thank you. In the certificate of decision, it references, with respect to the above captioned revised definitive subdivision plan originally submitted to the planning board of the town of Deerfield by Mark A. Whiteman, DBA Aragas, on December 15, 2016, the planning board hereby certifies. So I had picked up that reference. Yeah. Hmm. You, you also have on the stormwater management, or stormwater permit decision, date of plan, December 15, 2016, revised January 25th, February 8th, March 2nd, and March 22nd, 2017. Yeah, so March 22nd was the one that Pat Smith thought it that, should be on. That's right. the definitive plan. The survey yeah, was actually that, December 15th. Enough for I know it's a little confusing because it's, it's actually, it references the actual survey of the land, uh, which is December 15th. Right. The plan that was approved, in other words, a subdivision plan, right. would be one of the Revision, revisions revised. of that, which is March 22nd. So we can amend that if you want to, but it is on the stormwater in that fact. Do you have that? Do you want to so see this, this copy of the stormwater? Yeah. So this date of the plan is the 15th, and then various sheets revised, blah, 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 March 22nd. Up through and there, yeah. Oh, that's in there then? So that is on our document. So that's that's the question, and again, um, it says date of plans in December, and then various sheets revised 25th of January, 17, 8 February, 17 to March, and 22 March, 17. That's on right, but the, uh, the language in this documents that we're looking at tonight say surveyed the, the date of the because he didn't go back and resurvey no. what you're saying. Correct. They just updated things. They as updated. They, went along. they revised right. some things. The, the lots stayed the same. Yeah. Yeah. There so didn't you change? You dropped two lots though. So they were that was before that. Yeah. yeah before they, that. that okay. Was, that right. was before that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So as long as I think if that the reference is on there. To, affect you if it does just come back or something but great uh, um, all right and the other one just to make sure so she did this is a from our attorney um, you know it's most it seems like she got a lot of uh, little little things no big comments
So this, so let's, maybe you can just go through it quickly with us. So the, so these are the things that we had talked about. And um, so what's number one is set, so. Um, well, this document was approved by the board already, and then you, we had to bring it to your attorneys okay. to have them approve it, which has been done. So we've gone, yeah, we've done the. the On the covenant? Too. So, yeah, I mean, this is the, the, one of the things there it says is that <clears throat> when they start each phase, you get two years to do it. Remember, we talked about that, mm -hmm. that you can't sell, um, you can't sell any of them until it's com the access way is completed and the right. municipal services. So those are the things that. Uh, so about. Massachusetts law has a couple of different ways to provide assurances that the road is going to be built. Yeah. And one of the options is the covenant. So that was the yeah. direction we chose. Um, and essentially, it, it, the security is, is that Mr. Whiteman can't sell any, uh, any of the homes on any of the lots without the construction to that lot being completed and signed off yeah. by the, the DPW and the planning board. And planning board or uh, the DPW will report to you, and then the chair of the planning board oh, okay. relies upon the um, the DPW okay. head, uh, and that's in section three. Mm. And didn't, didn't we had we have picked a, an inspector? No, the, so th that's another thing that I was right. hoping we could get to that, but we're not going to get to that tonight. But just uh, the um, monitoring the progress and the things that we were going to have someone like our building inspector can do a lot of it, but we need an engineer to come in at a couple points. We had a. So. Um, a pre-construction meeting at the property uh, last week and you the building inspector the assistant building inspector two people from the water commission uh, Roger Stasky from the water department Kevin Scarborough and some yeah. others okay. <laughs> were there right. to discuss it, as well as my engineer right. and my uh, road crew deeds construction uh, were all there and they went back and forth to discuss how this was going to work and what right. would be done by who so it was we, I referred them back to this document that you folks approved, being the road utility easement, et cetera, yeah. on how it should be done, which was mm -hmm. to put it into the building commissioner's hands, and he makes a decision as to who does inspections and when inspections need to be done by outside sources. And if, um, if there is a time during the process where he believes this is something that needs to be done by an outside source, then they bring it in and I pay for it. Um, as to who that source is, that will be determined by the building commissioner, not by us. Uh, as a third party, and uh, Kevin is working with him on some of the issues regarding the road as well. So we think we have a nice way to funnel it all to one location and that, or one person, as you had described and asked for, and then that one person decides how it's going to be handled. Mm -hmm. So that way, everything's being handled in one particular fashion. Channel, yeah, I get channel. Thank you. I get nervous when you know it's multiple channels and multiple people yep. are involved. So this way, it's right to one person. Right, but we did want to make sure the planning board gets some updates. And yes, well, there'll be, as you know, there's a list of uh, inspections that are going to occur, and then there's random inspections that, that the building commissioner can do anytime he wants to. But the list of those inspections, you'll have a report from the building commissioner stating what happened, and uh, you can review those anytime you want. Yep. All right, so like I say, um, yeah, this is all stuff we've talked about before. Our attorney, the town council has looked at it. Pat Smith has looked at it. Uh, looked at it to some extent. You guys want to read it, or are we ready to execute? You guys wrote it <laughs> and approved it. Kinda. <laughs> and so now we are being asked to have the board execute the documents. Whatever that means, as opposed to approve or authorize or whatever, I guess it's signing. Another language, um, and then we sign these, and then these you, these you go to the um, you take the registry. Correct. There will be a little lag because, as you can tell by the documents, they're meant to be recorded with the deed references and things, which we haven't purchased the parcel, pending getting these conditions satisfied by the board. So, right. So that's. That's the blank date on here Correct. when right. you get the deeds and everything. So Lisa's comment to Dan was, I'm fine with the documents. You need to get these to the board to execute the right. documents and accept. You right. just read the same thing. That's what I got. Yeah. yeah.
So I'll make a motion that we execute both the, um, the covenant for the uh, condos at Sugarloaf and the road utility easement. I'll second it. Discussion? Everything's still up in the air, kind of. You're going to speak into the mic. Sorry. Um, why can't we just have the building inspector do all the inspections or have control over all the inspections? Well, that's you never know what's going to happen with the highway superintendent's schedule. When they're putting catch basins in, they're putting manholes in, they're putting the, tie, the tees in, you got to get dimensions, you got to get ties to everything, you got to have one person running that book so they know what's what. Yeah, and I believe we're leaving that up to the town staff, and it's like like we talked about, the building inspector's kind of the first one on site, but then when it has to do with the road, we, we want our DPW person there too. It's not a... It's a matter of scheduling, because you won't get the right. DPW, right. Yeah. So why not have the assistant building inspector? I, well, I don't think these documents get, these documents don't get into that. But that would be part of well, what I, we were talking about for the inspector. Right. Well, these documents are meant to satisfy the conditions, yeah. specific conditions okay. in here. That That is a separate just, condition, which... There's going to be pipe going in the ground. It doesn't get... Looked at again. Looked at again. You can't just leave it open. Right. No, that doesn't... I don't think any of these talk about that kind of level. Okay. So, but... Detail. No. But in... Well, in point it of, should. Yeah, I mean, uh, tell, what, me, tell me what you. I'm confused. Then what you? I thought you said you didn't want it to be too specific. I wanted it to be all through the building inspector, one person, because when something happens at the highway department, is it go down and measure the the sewer inlet at lot six, or is it take care of some other problem that came up where they got to go, you know, do something else? So what this says, in addition there to Regus LLC or its assigned shall cause the ways and improvements to be constructed as contemplated by any statutory covenant, covenant with the town of Deerfield and in compliance with the Deerfield Planning Board rules and regulations and decisions. So that's what their covenant is to do it the right way. I don't think it says anything about. It's, and it states that the, it building, the, the building commissioner oversees all of this and it's his determination right. after that list as to how many more inspections he wants to make. Okay. You get into the obligation and uh, <coughs> uh. but it's basically saying follow the plan. Yeah, and you have a separate condition, which is condition yeah. six, which applicant shall provide the opportunity for the town. Yeah. But we're, these documents are meant to satisfy condition two and five of yeah. subdivision approval. Wait, what about six? Tell me what six is. S six is addressing Mr. Ante's concern. I don't know if it's adequately addressing it, but that, that was the board's decision on number six. It's about who would inspect as pipe. I'm sorry, I'm looking at six on the subdivision approval. You're looking on that guy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no. It's interesting because. Right. The covenant is meant to satisfy. The covenant's just different. Right. 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 The, the state. To Mr. Ante's point, number six does state that um, by agreement with the Deerfield Planning Board prior to endorsement of the definitive plan is a deemed necessary by the building commissioner. And, and I apologize. So what we're referring to in number six is the certificate of decision right. that oh, was issued. Way, way back, way back. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was the 24th. Yeah. Uh, that was so done on the 24th. I guess right. Right. The certificate of decision had several conditions on it, and one of them was that we present you with a road utility easement, and one was that we present you with a covenant. And then as a separate condition is this number six that we keep referring to, which deals with the inspections. I can give you a copy of that if. I've got, it. I got that here still. I mean. This, 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 this. That's where the covenant and the yes. road maintenance yes. agreement comes from. Okay. And it states clearly that the building and commissioner is responsible that's for all inspections. Right. Yeah, yeah, these, the, the, I think they, they got the it already. Okay. Yeah, but this is an old draft. Yeah, here, I, I this is the one we up. did on the 24th. Gotcha. 
Yep. That was the work. That was the one. We, yep. That was not the final one. We. That was the one we worked from. I have the ones here that were recorded in the Registry of Deeds that, were after the 20-day appeal. Yeah. This is better. Sorry. Here. That's the cleaned up version. And he's right. That's that is. I might even have that. Because we had, we had several that we shut worked together. 14 was that one of them? The original 14. I mean, there was a couple of them that had to do with this. And yeah, they, they got combined. Yeah, they got we combined, combined number yeah. four. I think it was number yeah. six. Yeah. yeah, or three, something like that. The documents that we're going over tonight are the documents that were created by requirement of this, this definitive area. plan, right? Yeah, yeah. That's mine. That's pretty close to you. All right, pretty close to the time. I didn't have yeah. my name on mine, but you can. Yeah, you this is, yeah I'll give it back. Yeah, I'll give it back. I see this. It's a in my pile. I don't know. I don't have my copy. I've got copies of everything else. Two of, two of this one. Well, this is the so on page three, five C. And then number two and this number is just, uh, ten. This isn't this is the storm I have that one. No, you can This is the storm right. They're not like the that. not final. Are you looking at the storm water? That was the storm no, water, yeah. right? So oh. that's so it's the other one that does. The other one is the one they're looking at. You have an April twenty fourth one, right? Okay. Yeah, that was really handed over that way, I think. But that's yours. That's official. So that's yours. right. That's that's from. Oh, okay. So any, anything else on this? 3F. I don't think it's in the best interest of the town that the uh, locations uh, would allowing catch basins to be located at more hydrologically appropriate locations, which to me is an opinion. Uh, rather than at the in required intervals of not more than 300 feet would be in the best interest of the town. I disagree. Right, but that's... And the project itself is consistent with standard engineering practices. I disagree. Well, basically, so I believe that when we made the motion for this, well, Max, you disagreed. You voted no. I did. Okay. And so I'll vote no already, again. You already right. voted no So now this. all we're doing is so. saying that this is, a, this is a done deal, so now we're saying let's yeah. execute the road maintenance oh, easement with and the covenant that means that they're going to follow through on all this. So having no more discussion, all those in favor of executing the, the covenant and the uh, road utility easement, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Uh, abstain. So 310? 310. Yes. Um, Can I ask Mr. Antes what the opposition is? We're, these have been approved by your town attorney as required, and they've been approved by your, uh, by your town attorney as required. That's what was... That was what the, we're not going back to the definitive approval. That's already been done. What we're doing is going to the definitive subdivision plan certificate and meeting the requirements. I think he's just, I think he's just restating his objection to the original. I it's it's not my opinion. You can express your opinion, but as a member of this board, you're responsible for enforcing what's been put in front of you. And what you're bringing up has nothing to do with what you're voting on. I can vote you can as vote. I wish. You can vote as you wish, but you have to comply with what you've taken an oath to do. So I'll ask for the record one more time to explain your opposition to the... Um, I don't think our, it's in the town's best interest that we had granted that waiver in the first place. But that's not what we're discussing here. We're discussing the two documents well, in front of the board tonight that are required for us to issue sign. To me. It's the same issue. It wasn't right then. It 
It doesn't just because a bunch of other people voted yes doesn't Sorry. change my opinion. This is not regarding stormwater. This is regarding the two documents that are in front of the board now, not the stormwater. So the two documents in front of the board. Mr. Wait, my, my concern is that while the vote is valid, the, it does require a, a signature of the majority of the planning board. So while the vote can be uh, approved this evening, I'm not sure that without a majority of signatures that this is, uh, and that's my concern. Yeah. So in other words, you, you feel it has to have four signatures minimum? It states that on the document. Okay. Yeah. I think the vote that you just took is binding, but I, I think another signature is required as well. Which I, I, that, so that's what I'm just trying to figure out, how we can get that. Um, obviously, there's three people missing, and I apologize about that. Um, if we get Roger to come in during the day, some days he's written down, you're working, so. Yeah, because anybody who voted, well, he actually wasn't here for yeah. the meeting of the he other. He was on the 24th, wasn't he? Was he on the 24th? Yeah. I think he was there. Um, I'm just looking back through the minutes. I think he was. Um, but I think I think we certainly um, Kip or, or John Barone. We, we had could certainly six, get their we had signatures. Six people so. at that meeting um, who was not there. Uh, would you have any uh, any insight into this? So it, these documents to execute them, it says the majority of the planning board. Actually, Roger was not so there. So tonight he we only have three out of seven people signing it. Um, Roger was the only one not there on the 24th. But if we could get one of the other members to sign it this coming week, probably. Well, we voted, and that's a, it's, a, it's a majority of who's present. Majority, and the, we have a quorum present. Right. So but I'm not concerned about that. Majority um, of signatures. But for the signature that's going to go to the registry, I think it is better to have a four out of seven. I'm quite personally, I'm not sure the vote's required. It's all that it is, is. It's executing. I know. It doesn't right. say that we vote to approve. Actually. No, it's so, already been approved. Yeah. We're all going right. By this again. I'd ask for a rescission of the vote. I don't think there's a vote that's required. And I think that all we're looking for is four signatures. Yeah. And, and couldn't be Roger, uh, right? Or can it be Roger? I think it can be anybody, anybody on the planning yeah. board. Yeah, yeah. anybody okay. on the planning board. So you got yeah. 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 You need I one, would one more I'm signature out of three. So humbly requesting re a, re a uh, removal of um, that vote, rescission of the vote. Yeah, I mean, the, if this is a whereas kind of document, whereas, whereas, therefore. Um, and it's all stuff that we've already talked about and we've already voted on. And approved, yes. And approved, right. All we're asking for is four signatures on the covenant uh -huh. and the road maintenance utility agreement, which has had to be approved by your attorney, yeah. which, as stated by Wendy, uh, has been approved by your attorney. Yeah. So I'm not even sure we need to be in a meeting. It's, it's just it four signatures, just been, uh, planning board meeting, yeah. uh, members. I don't see anywhere where it requires a vote. And then this road utility easement, is there a place for us to sign? It's on, uh, no, it's just me. I think you just... Uh, it was just meant to be approved and formed by council, so right. I, I wanted to bring it to the board. Yeah, because that had nothing even place to say. And the other was the uh, phasing of the road, and we've given you a copy of that already, which okay. I'm happy to give you again. So only one document needs a signature or needs the four signatures. Uh, there is nowhere on right. here that this states is, it needs is, to be a vote. This is the enforceability is for you, so. All right. All right, so I guess... Um, so I'm good with that. All we needed to do was execute this, so we didn't need to vote. So can we take the, the vote off the minutes of the? As far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need to vote on so the. So I'll just put in the minutes that we signed the covenant. And that we reviewed and it, received, that our town council looked at it. We and, reviewed uh, the road utility easement and, and the, covenant. the covenant and signed the covenant. Yes. And okay. the phasing, do you want copies of that again, or are you good I, with that? You have those on. Oh, look at that. Maybe we can do this right now. Oh, here it comes, oh. Kip. Yeah. Did, did we get that? I remember you said. Yeah, remember I made a big deal out of him giving it to you that night. And he oh, made, you weren't sure? He, he made a big deal out of giving it to you. And did Kip did, uh, have copies of that? Yes. Yeah, so if you have copies, because I know, I'm sure Pat won't get I saw one. That, I, like I saw that map that you've got there. Yeah. Sorry, I'm late. Hey, Kip. Can you um, add to the minutes that Ed? Whatever time it is. Yeah, I'll, I'll add a to new, he came another in member. John, came. He's old. 7:55. Oh, cool. Yeah, this is great. All right, so we'll put this in the file. So, Kip, let us just quickly update you because you can be very helpful. Okay. <laughs> Tonight we've been asked to um, execute a covenant and the road utility easement for the uh, condos at Sugarloaf. Mm -hmm. So this is all relative to things that we've already agreed on and discussed and yep. approved. 
our attorney, Lisa Mead, has reviewed them, and I got an email from her saying these, uh, I am fine with these documents. Uh, attorney Graves and her went back and forth on a couple of typos and a little thing. We talked about what date should be on it. We're all good with that. Um, and three out of the five, uh, so it's not really a vote because we've already done all the voting. Now we're just yeah. executing. They need at least four uh, planning board members to sign this so they can file it. Um, and we only have three tonight. Okay. Max, Max didn't want to okay. sign that. So if, if you're able to execute this, then we can okay, have great. the four. Thank you. We were going to save this and ask you sometime during the week to come in, you or John or Roger, to do it. So, mm. All right. So I'd like us to get a copy of this, and then you take the original, and, and um, when you have the... We'll provide another copy when it's recorded with yeah. proof of recording. All right. Um, yeah, let's just get a quick copy of this. Is there any code for that copy machine now? No. I can do it. Either one or one, two should work. Yeah. I don't know if we have a specific... I might be on. Wendy was just over there doing some stuff. And then we would just hand in the, uh, the phasing of the roads. So we did take a vote, Kip, and then decided to, that we didn't have to. That we didn't need because so we, we didn't just, need to approve it. We just need to execute we're just it. Taking it off some minutes. Right. That just, just so you know. So just briefly, how did the uh, the meeting went well? And we'll, well uh, just for for our information, will we see construction this summer? Or I'm hoping uh, we'll start in July. Yeah, right. we have no other nothing holding us back from. From uh, starting now, I have 17 under deposit already, All right. with no advertising. <laughs> yeah, the phone's been ringing, and uh, as a matter of fact, we have one buyer here. Yeah. Well, I should say that later in this meeting, um, we're going to start a discussion about affordable senior housing. We'd love and to participate. We'd in love to. The there might be some referrals going back and forth, and we want to. You know, there's been talk over the years, and we're trying to move that forward a little and there's a couple potential places I guess close to downtown so well we talked we discussed uh, early in the process I did with the select board about uh, doing CPA or taking CPA money and uh, reducing the cost of some of the units in right. the project because the uh, town of Leverett has actually created a template that we can use instead of having to create one uh, it was done by Ken Khan for the town of Leverett and he's on the planning board yeah and uh, explained that anybody who wanted to move who lived in Leverett or was moving to Leverett and was buying their first home could get up to 25% of the purchase price if the purchase, or 20% of the purchase price if the purchase was no more than 250. Hmm. So the town would give them $50,000 to buy a house in town. Yeah. They were trying to get young blood into the town. Right. But the document written, uh, MJ Adams shared with me, and it works very nicely to allow us to do the same thing in Deerfield by taking CPA money, reducing the cost of, say, nine units by $100,000 a piece. I can reduce the finishes on the interior and drop another ten or $20,000 off of it to actually get um, condos at one seventy nine nine or so. Hmm. Now, when that happens, th does that money then roll over at the end if they sell it? That's correct. The, the, um, the hundred thousand dollars or whatever it might be always stays in there so it always stays um, um, adjusted or subsidized right. so there'd be deed restrictions yeah. to so it's automatically, yes and it doesn't 20 percent then i wondered if that meant that well that was for leverage fixed or whether the percentage was fixed. yeah that was actually for leverage so we could use whatever number we want but the beauty of it is that goes toward your uh 10 percent requirements as well right yeah right and it's not i wouldn't call it low income but i would call it subsidized and affordable you know, 179, 189 in Deerfield for a new construction yeah. Yeah. downtown. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. And 55 no, which Yes, is, correct. That's the, yeah. Yeah. And then and we, is there anybody that's willing to do that for Deerfield, for your project? Or well, you have the still, CPA money. The town has the CPA money. What he's saying is the town would have to have some discussions about that. Okay, and so that's, that's something not, that the town wants to. Really. No, well, that, yeah. as I said, it's part of our discussion about affordable senior housing. I see. I see what right. you're saying. Okay. To, yeah, that's, gotcha. a, that's a potential option. Gotcha. I got gotcha. you. I thought you were talking about the senior center that's being changed. Well, no, yeah. that's, we're talking about everything. Right. Okay. And gotcha. just looking at what are all the different options. And people, different people need yes. different options sometimes. Exactly. So yes. it might be good to have yeah. several. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. I think town meeting vote is required for any of that stuff. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you got the original? Uh, yes. We're, we've got it in process. All right. Thanks very much. Anything else? Well, thank you. Nope. Thank you very much for your time. Good luck. 
Grubbing. Clearing and grubbing. Clearing and grubbing, yes. <laughs> that's, that's the first that's thing favorite. on phase one. <laughs> Step one, phase one, clearing and grubbing. Thanks. Very elegant. <laughs> All right, so we have, um, we were notified the past week or two that there's going to be some resurfacing on Route 5 and 10 um, from, and the, Deer too, from the Deerfield though. Waitley border to Elm Street, or no, I think up to the fire station. Right? Fire station. And isn't it going to be widened as well, some? So that's the question is do we, uh, and it doesn't necessarily uh, come through the planning board, but. Uh, we were asked for a comment. I, uh, I think we were asked for comments, although I don't see yeah, anything in particular in here. Um, but I asked the town to keep the planning board abreast on it, and ex in particular, in be because of the um, Cumberland Farms being on the corner of Elm and where the sidewalks might go, right. and if there is widening needed, that this would be an opportunity to uh, get involved with Mass DOT. I was told that there is a meeting coming up. But it hasn't been set yet. I just talked to. Uh just talked to Wendy while I was in there making the copies. Good. Yes, well, the All copies right. need to be notarized. By the way, that's a big that's an issue. So I think Wendy was saying they need to notarize it. Yeah, we'll notarize it tomorrow. So All right. Just so you know. Okay. Good. So Wendy, you'll just keep us up to date on when that meeting with the Mass DOT is about the yeah. five and ten. Yeah. Peterson. Yes. So we don't have to get it. We don't, I didn't want all of us to be in touch with that. Greenman and Peterson. Right. So you will be and you'll keep us up to date. But that makes sense, right? If there's potential to put sidewalks in different places, this is the time we want to. And, and I think Greenman and Peterson was the same engineering firm that did the, the, the event that day when we looked at that. So oh, the sidewalks. Yeah. What John was called state road safety audit. We had a big meeting in here. It was during the daytime. Tons oh. of people were here. They did a walk around. Nice. When was that? Public safety officials. Oh, no, I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, it will be integrated, but let's be sure. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Great. Thank you. Yes, you may have All right. Thanks, Wendy. No, it's pouring rain. Pouring rain. Anything else on that? Yeah. And it's, is it, uh, since you're here, is it also on the select board is yes. involved in that too? So. All right. The complete streets was mostly just you paint. Know. To me, complete streets was just how you line the road, and you might want to get some input on how they're winding the road once, you know, you're not going to be able to change the pavement, but, you know, widths of bike lanes and widths of lines and things like that would be something they might be able to agree with you on to make it more, to fit in more with that complete streets format. Uh -huh. So what they said is the project proposes pavement resurfacing and widening to accommodate appropriate shoulders as well as pedestrian and bicycle accommodations, enhanced pavement markings, and traffic signal upgrades. Right. So that's all. It's no new signals, just upgrading the ones that are there. Well, that's what it says. Right. But I think if the town wanted to give some input and right. said, We'd like you know, signals. things need to yeah. change, that should be yeah. part of the discussion. Yeah. So. Yeah. Once they do it, we don't obviously have any input, probably. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. The, the conversation for the crosswalks, as well as uh, different um, lighting apparatus, for the uh, change has already been taken into consideration. There. Good. Sorry about that. That's very cool. Yeah, I, want that. I want that ring. <laughs> <laughs> do I have that ring? All right. Then last meeting, we were asked uh, to provide comments to the ZBA on. Uh, uh, change of use at 707 Greenfield Road, which is in the northern part of of Deerfield there. Um, since then, building inspector has had some discussions with me and, and them to find out that they're changing use and they might be put in parking spaces and other things. So the question became, does it require a site plan review? Um, there was a ZBA meeting on Thursday last week. I wasn't able to attend, so I don't know what the um, result. Are you somebody here from yeah. about this project? Oh, oh, great. Okay, come on up. Come on up. I don't. I don't see any. Um, we don't, we don't have any documents on this yet. No, I haven't filed the okay. application. All right. Oh, great. Can you, you um? Yeah, file which my, application? My name is Christy Bodine. I'm an attorney in Amherst Salt Practice Practice and representing uh, Brian Atherton and uh, Two Feathers Restoration and, and Design. Um, 
We were before the ZBA last week, and uh, he was granted a special permit for change of use at that location. Um, I'm not sure whether site plan review is required or not, and I haven't filed a site plan review application because Dick Kalashevsky suggested that we would talk tonight and see what, what you might need. Mm -hmm. um, what he's planning to do is uh, sort of renovate the interior of the building and use it to uh, repair and restore RVs and trailers. All of the work is going to take place behind a fence. Um, there's really de minimis changes to the lot. He's going to tear up a, a con reduce the size of a concrete pad that's in front of the building. The existing, you know, ground, if you will, is grass and gravel. There's no paving anticipated. Um, he's going to replace some split rail fence. He wants to install chain link fence. We've got a site plan um, for you to look at. Um, you know, he's going to have 10 parking spaces, but it's passive parking for RVs that are for sale. So the things that would trigger site plan review, I guess, are that he will have um, you know, restored RVs for sale on display on the lot um, and the number of parking spaces. But other than that, you know, there's no paving, there's no grading, there's, no, there's nothing really going to be happening to the dirt, if you will. He's putting in a septic in a well. Um, so we just, you know, I don't, we don't want to have to do a stormwater management plan and, and all that if we don't have to because mm -hmm. we don't really feel like the changes are that significant. Um, but we obviously we're here to ask you what you think and what your concerns might be. So the, do you have a plan view? Yeah. Uh, I'll right. give you another one. I got, I got extra space. I know. <laughs> I, know. I, know. I, I can't put it in full fancy. Oh, I can pass it through, but oh, okay. Yeah, here, I've got a large tree. Right. So, so the thing that I like raised questions with me was our, our bylaws talking about parking spaces and right now I don't know if there's any yeah they the, the the special permit approved 12 spaces that are really display parking spaces for the as far as live parking for customers there's only like two or three or four spaces so it isn't like we're adding a big parking lot per se um, I don't it seems like the intent of the of the site plan review is to is to be, have concerns about how much paved surface there's going to be stormwater runoff and things like that, which I don't think are going to be necessarily a factor in this in this project. Um, I guess I would ask: Is there any uh, handicapped parking, and do you have to have handicapped bathrooms, and yeah. you know, and all of that yeah. in there? So that, uh, Brian will speak. Yeah, I'll, I'll speak on that once you guys coordinate it there. Um, Directly in front, if you get that frontal view there, you'll see the large overhead door. To the left of that is the build out. It'll have a handicap accessible because I have back injury. I use a power cart from time to time, so I'm making sure everything's ready for me. Um, there is a handicap parking spot that'll be directly in front of the door. Then there's a regular parking spot to the left, and then there's two more parking spots to the right of the large door. Inside, there will be a uh, when you walk into that door, you got a room that's no wider than six, 16 feet wide. It's, I believe, it's about 18 feet in. That's our design center. Mm -hmm. There will be a little bit of an L shape to that room where there's a parts counter and there's a handicap accessible ADA compliant restroom in that space. And then behind that, we'll have a little small storage closet where we'll have the water heater, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yes. To answer your question on handicap accessibility, out, yeah. Out front on that plan, Dick suggested, and I agreed with him on it, so we added it in, is towards the street front. You'll have two additional parking spaces for clients, as well as two 40-foot parking spots, just in case somebody wants to pull in with a trailer. It gives them an opportunity to park there. Um, so that wasn't a requirement, but it was a great suggestion, so we took and ran with that. The other thing that you'll find is where the office area is there to the left of that building is going to be a dump station. That was a request um, that was provided to us, and so we'll comply with that since we're already putting the septic system in anyhow. Um, I guess some residents might have interests of utilizing that versus having to drive down to Hatfield where the next closest dump station is located. Um, there is going to be employee parking behind the large fence. We did designate four additional parking spots specifically for that reason only. There is four designated um, at this point for storage for any trailers. 
um, like they said uh, and agreed with, is any kind of repairs behind a fence and or inside of the building. And we'll have fencing. There is a ledge there. This is a property which had been created with fill many years back. There's quite a drop, about a 25-foot drop. So we are going to make sure that that fencing is going all the way. Because my concern is if you have kids or who knows what walking along there, we don't want them going over that hill. So that, that's, that fence will continue down quite a ways, and it'll drop down to a four-foot high chain link fence. So if we're nice and the, secure. If you look at the plan view, in other words, um, the way we explained it to the ZBA was the, the line that, that runs along the... I guess it's the west side of the property with the X's is chain link fence. Yeah, on the, and around all around the back. Your frontal side. your frontal view is the stockade fence that mm -hmm. will drop down to a small chain link towards the south side. Around the building is what she's talking about here is the the west part of the property mm -hmm. and the south side of the building will be an 8-foot chain link fence. So the property there will be secure when it comes to again anybody going over the edge or just in general for security. And we also, um, yep, okay. I'll give them a chance to look. Yep. Eager. <laughs> so, so just quickly, why, what, I go to the bylaws, 5400 site plan review applicability, um, the following types of activities and uses require site plan review by the planning board. Right. Um, 5411, a change of use. That will so that by itself can trigger it. Yep. Or construction, alteration, uh, or addition of more than 600 feet. Which then that's not applicable. Right. No. But this is a change of use. And that's the only thing I think we found that then number might trigger. Then 5412, construction or expansion of a parking lot, uh, which results in a cumulative total of 10 or more parking spaces or 2,000 square feet of parking area. Now, the unknown to this is I originally was told by our building inspector, Dick, that this property was originally approached when purchased to be a boat repair. So what's to be said that there wasn't already parking designated, then we haven't had an answer to that. So we're just pretending as if it didn't exist. But it, supposedly that was the use. The property never received the water or septic that would have been required, therefore defaulted into a warehouse situ situation. So my assumption would be the way the property is laid out is that parking was already something that would have been in place. It's still be permanent for this use. Right. And then, so. and then 5414, outdoor storage sales right. or display yeah. associated with any retail use. Right. Yep. So I, I see three out of our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possibilities yep. as okay. kind of pertaining exactly. to this. Okay. And sure. again, we're not looking to just force everything in the site plan. Right. And, and the stormwater is a whole other thing. We can always not ask for that. So that we, have, be, we have flexibility yeah, about plan, that. I mean, we're perfectly, we're prepared to, to, to go through that. And that's, um, that's what I'm seeing. I mean, you're, yeah. you're well on your way. Yeah. To, to I think also, we've got, we've got all the plans. The, that, yeah. Yeah. I also wonder about the sign. It looks like it's oversized. Nope. No. It's actually undersized. You're allowed up to six by six on a building, and that's actually, to your right, you'll see I was instructed that it's 35 square feet is the maximum, and that is undersized. Okay. Fine. So one of the other reasons why I, I guess this is my own, maybe personal opinion, but do, do like site plan review because it requires a public hearing and notification of abutters, and, and yeah. I just think that's a good thing yeah. when there's change yeah. of use, when things go on, because otherwise we hear about it after the fact. Well, I we already tell went you. through that with a, we already did that with a special permit, too, so right. required a public all hearing right. and, um, and notification, so we'll do that again. And all the abutters have been supportive at this point, so right. uh, yeah. we've worked and, with I mean, them. We, we, you know, we all know the area. We all drive by there, and that's yeah. another reason why we want to do this Make sure people are clear what, <laughs> what is going to be done here and what isn't. Right. Yeah. Um, and everybody, when they hear about repairs, they're like, ah, it could become a junkyard or something, you know. So well, that was, that was the discussion because, unfortunately, there's other facilities that do similar work. We're the only company in New England that does the extensive work that we do. Mm -hmm. um, and our concern is trying to get open as soon as possible because I have clients waiting. Okay. Are you, is this an existing business? This is an existing business that was originally supposed to go into Greenfield. Unfortunately, we had a property owner that didn't comply with city requirements for us to move in. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we lost quite a chunk of change there. 
Uh, in this case, we're buying the property. It will be formed as its own LLC. Uh, this property will be operated underneath the Two Feathers Restoration Design. So we do conversions. We're, we're fab shop is the easiest way to put it, but we focus on RV. And we're teamed up. I was a GCC student, existing. business student, so this is part of that so program. So we'll do a site plan review application. That's fine. We've got, I think we've got virtually all the materials that you need. We've got the plans. We've got the CAD drawings. We've got elevations. We've got all the stuff that was submitted to the to the ZBA. Yeah. Um, is pretty much what yeah, I think what you need. Yeah, because a lot of what we asked for was on, on these two. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what else you need that we haven't already submitted. So um, on your plan, maybe you can tell us that. On the plan, it shows a drain. Is that an existing one? Pre-existing, yes. been there for multiple years. Uh, Dick did look at that when he did a site walk uh, yep. about a week ago, and he goes, ah, that's been there for a very long time. It's a large drain. Right, but one of the things that you're going to need to deal with is that this park near, if that serves it, it it's exactly what the stormwater bylaw is to prevent, taking your water and putting it on your neighbor's land. It's not on the neighbor. It's, it's still on the same exact property. But you have to control it, I guess. Okay, you know lost you. This is something new to me. So, <laughs> oh, oh. well, this plan. It looks like the pipe goes into the off to the next property. That's what yeah. it's. It's actually still on the same property. It's just over the edge of the ledge, which is still part of our property. Oh, the blue line is still the property. Yes, I guess. it is. Yeah. But it gets goes goes But then where does it go? Because it, 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 it goes yeah. wherever. So. Yeah, so it shoots right here, and the property line is right is here. And it stops over here. What it prevents stops, the water? What's right it, what prevents it? Or, this is a stream marsh yeah. type. So it actually stops here in our property lines here. But that's another thing to issue because with the direct thing, if this goes to, did you go to Conservation, Conservation Commission? No, Not we, need, we need to go to them as well. Because this might be a red, I'm just giving you a heads sure. up, it might be a red flag. That drain being there, if you have an RV there and for some reason some. you have an oil leak, it's directly right into sure. the wetlands and that's a big issue. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, so. Yeah, we're aware of that. Yeah, so the conditions on the permit included coming to you and, and also going to the CONCOM. Mm. So we haven't talked to them yet. Because we have some trees that have to be removed that are leaning drastically over the building. And that's all in the top area where it's all fill. So we have to find out where that buffer is. So, one, so on um, just a regular site plan, one of the submittals, um, water provision, fire protection, sanitary sewage, Yep. And then storm drainage. Um, so I guess what I'd wonder is if, if they if they just do that as part of the site plan, then okay. would we consider waiving the stormwater well, management we have, plan? We have, we have if, if we can work with uh, CONCOM, we have done joint exactly. stuff before. So Normally that's they a possibility do, there. What they do, we look at them and we're like, that's sure. great. And they're, they're a good committee. They'll talk to you and, sure. um, and stuff. So I guess that's what I would... Um, I would say, you know, drainage is an issue. Every, everybody cares about it. Right, so absolutely. You, you will, you will a, too. This is a, the other thing um, to, to bear in mind is this isn't a paved site. This is a, right. pervious. So it's a very pervious site. And he's, yeah. he's been looking for puddling. And uh -huh. with the recent rainstorms, and there hasn't been any, there's no water backing up on the property. There's not a lot of runoff. It's not. And I'm just, I mean, with heavy vehicles on there, isn't it kind of. Well, one of the issues. Some issues. Well, that's pretty well compacted through the years yeah. from people driving. There is some grass gravel that's there. there. The grass has popped up through the years because I've cut the grass for the property owner a couple times since the lawnmower don't work and he lives on the Cape. But there is a combination of soil and gravel that's there presently, and it's pretty well compacted. Uh, once we remove the uh, large pad that kind of came straight out from the large door, it's actually kind of bowed which is not good. Um, uh, so that's coming out, and we're actually kind of redirecting because you'll have the new build-out area. So we're actually 400 and something square feet is what we're putting back in. That massive piece is huge. I'm only going to be expecting that once we pull up that area is to, to put new fresh gravel in that same space that's there now. Right, but yeah, other right, than right, that, right, it's, yep. it's all pretty compacted there in pre-existing yeah. gravel underneath the concrete. So you're Cleaning it up. So your addition is going to be on the south side of the building? It's within the building. So oh, you have a 3,000 square foot building in the end, you'll have a little over 2,000 square feet of workspace. Oh, I see. Okay. So you'll have um, to the far wall to this large door, 
um, we're staying a foot away from that, so it gives us space, and it's going in about 35 He's feet. talking about roughly. the concrete pad. He's not changing the building at all. Yeah. The building is so not being added to or taken right. away from. The building structure isn't, Everything's inside. isn't going to be touched. And are you going to be washing trailers there? No. Stuff? No. No. Hmm. Not in our scope of our restorations. No solvents, no hazardous material, none of that. You can buy the stuff from us and take it home and do it yourself. And the, is it a shared driveway? How does that work? So this property, um, it, it's I own. It's not a shared driveway. It's not a shared driveway. I own there's it. There's an easement. There's but an there's an easement, easement on the corner for the other for this through the adjacent lot to get in. But it's not a shared driveway. The driveway is approximately 40 feet wide. They have access to technically 20 feet, but uh, it's not that big of a deal for them to have access to the whole thing. Okay. Um, but there's a shared driveway is a specific term. But that's oh, right. I see. Right. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's an easement. It's, that an easement. easement. it's not a shared driveway. Gotcha. Sure, that's why you have a lawyer. It's magic words. That's why, oh, yeah. that's why you have a lawyer. Yeah. I'm an eager beaver. We're trying to get open. <laughs> and then the trees in front, you're gonna, you said you're going to cut some? Or so some? with um, agreeing with the ZBA, what was discovered when I had the property mapped out and everything is on the south corner there, the fence is on the property line. However, when it gets closer to that driveway, it's moved forward approximately a little over a foot, a few inches. So they're requiring us to, when we replace the fence, because it's ugly and you know, we want some you know, something that looks good with existing fencing that we're doing. So we'll be moving that back to where it should be on the property line. So there is trees that have to be removed along that stretch. They're sort of ratty trees. They're like really bad they're shape. Mm -hmm. There is one tree near the uh, guardrail piece that is on the state property, which is their thing. But otherwise, everything else be cleared out. Mm. Is there any way we can, like, use the concom? Hearing is our site plan review. Mm. Hearing it just yeah we did that we've done that tried doing that once yeah, yeah. that yeah. expedite things yeah too. that'd be awesome. So have you have you filed a letter of intent I, with them? I haven't filed a letter. I don't, I I'm here to find out what you need before yeah, yeah, yeah. I file the wrong thing. I guess so. I'm trying to do this. As I know some people it seems like most people go to them first, but um, right. Well, it's interesting that I came into this late. He filed okay. he filed a special permit application on his own. It went to all of the boards. Yeah. Nobody had any comment. Then we got in front of the zoning board, and they want us to come to you, and they want us to come to the concom, and now I'm involved. So okay. we're kind of doing use. partly a do over yeah, and yeah, trying yeah. to you know, right, make good. make sure we're making every all the dotting all the t's and crossing. So all do the you I's. need to go back to the ZBA, or you're good? No, we're done with the ZBA. Okay. But, so that let's um. So I will communicate with the well. You should file the letter of intent with Pressure the CONCOM. Yeah. And then, um, but then I'll communicate with them and let them know that we're expecting the site plan review. And if we could hold a joint meeting, that'd yeah. be great. That'd be great. Okay. Just to move things along. Yeah. I think that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And often they, sometimes what we do is we, we talk about the water issues first, and then they, they leave, and then we talk about <laughs> some, yeah. some of the other things. Because, okay. you know. We, Whatever floats the boat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gets it done quick. Water. Um, um, all right. So we meet the uh, first Monday of every month. So if that, oh, you know, that's. Um, You're talking about 4th of July. July 3rd, I know. So let's but not then maybe that. that's the week we try to do it because they meet Thursdays. How often do they meet in the Concord? Don't they meet Thursdays? Yeah, but how often? Is it? I think so. I don't know I which do Thursday. I know, but so maybe four of us could be there one Thursday, then yeah. that Thursday, and then we could actually do go Thursday that week. I'll tell you what day that is. They like to. They'll want to walk the land oh, yeah, first. Sure. Absolutely. That's true. So you need, need time to do that. So sixth. Well, actually, let's let's us start considering our next meeting. Mm -hmm. Meeting because it's. Uh, well, the third probably is. Probably don't want to do it on the third. Third, no. The sixth. What the, day of the week the is the tenth? Monday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the tenth is the following Monday. So normally that would be a second option for us. That would be a second option for us, but if they and that if that gave them time, I mean, could we? But if they wanted to meet the last week of June, are we are we available? But they could meet. Oh, the last week of June. If they if if you move quickly with that. You've them. got notice requirements though too. Oh, you've got yeah, at least I, I, got the, yeah, yeah, I would, so I, yeah, I'm thinking. Well, maybe July at least 10th, the that week might be the way to go. The if, if we were to get it in print for this Thursday, the deadline would be tomorrow. We couldn't do that. I don't no, yeah, so you don't want to go that fast. Not Plus, that we fast. don't. Yeah. You haven't talked to them yet. No. I'd say shoot for the sixth or the tenth. That's the Thursday uh, or the, the Monday. Sixth. Yeah, yeah the sixth. All right. No. That's July. 
the week of July 10th. Right, right 10th yeah. or oh, the 13th, yeah, yeah, 6th, yeah, yeah, 10th, yeah, yeah. 13th, whatever. Yeah. So I think that it's Thursdays. Okay. So are we are we figuring our plan, our meeting will be on the tenth? Let's make ours. At this point, that's the only thing I think we have. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so all right, we could just kind of work around this one. Put that down before we forget it. <laughs> Two. All right. So planning for it on the tenth. So. What's our? Um, I don't think we've done this yet. What's our, what, what will we do about? Do we need to know now whether we require a stormwater permit or not? Or? I, 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 I think, think we just could. <laughs> be helpful. To me, it doesn't. I think we're, we're it's check check no no no. Isn't it? Oh, what, on, the, what on that form. Storm, yeah, stormwater. I mean, See, I couldn't I mean, find the stormwater required. I, oh. I don't know where they are. So I, they're they, usually they on that board. Right well, I was trying to find them online. Oh. Um, they, but they are. They in the, are they be on. I don't know where they are. I, I guess so. I haven't yeah. looked at them. There's some things um, kind of difficult to find. From the building inspector, you should be able to get, well, I guess, what we call the flow chart. You know, if it meets this, move on to here. Mm -hmm. If it meets this, mm -hmm. move on to there. Mm -hmm. That's. Yeah, but I need to see the regulations to see what's applicable and what you yeah. know, the parameters are, and that, mm -hmm. that's what I couldn't find. So. That's on the website. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, 155 of our bylaws. Up with the general bylaws or the zoning bylaws? Uh, zoning bylaws. I mean, there's some sec chapter 264 of subdivision regulations. I, get, no. I no. just didn't no. know. Our 170, 179, isn't it? Our stormwater bylaws. 179 one, is site plan review. It's 155. Chapter 155. Yeah. Isn't it, John? Yeah, right here. Yeah, right here. Chapter 155. So there's a stormwater permit eligibility worksheet, and you can, and that's with the check. Um, Where is that? It should be. It should be on the website, but. Um, <laughs> Maybe Wendy knows where they are. No, because I asked her. <laughs> oh, she asked okay. me to ask you. So, I the, so they the, were, the, I thought they were somewhere out here in this hall. Is this in the code? Saw. That's something in the code book that's online. There's a couple things we found yes. that are not up there that used to be up there, yeah. and this is one of the things that's I, not. I don't know if that worksheet is on the online, but I do know that chapter well, I, 155. Well, I need one somehow or other. Where you know, maybe I could. It should be right here. Do you have a conservation agent? Because John, when John a, a couple of weeks back, when we had a visit, he went looking on the wall here, remember that? And you, we couldn't find it up here on the wall. Because that's, I mean, that's, that Priscilla was should things. be able to send it to you then if you call okay. her. You can ask her about it. Right. Sure. Because the things you check is, is, is this a new development? No. Or no. redevelopment? No. You can probably check no to that. Increased stormwater runoff? No. 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 Activities on the site will alter the drainage characteristics no. of the parcel. I wouldn't think so. The subject is residential, no. The commercial, um, that will disturb more than 12,000 square no. feet, no. Require earth removal, no. no. And it will convert land use to one of the higher potential pollutant loads, no. So if you check no to all them, then you can stop. So you, yeah, so I think we're not gonna be required. All right, good. Well, it's good to know. <laughs> you know, and some of these are opinions, but I think, you know, from what you've told us, you're not building anything outside. You know, you got the um, the dumpster out there. You just that should be on the plan, and those are the it kind is. of things that neighbors Dump, want to know about. Dumpsters dumpster there, the plan, dumpster um, screen behind the fence. Yeah. Timing um, of emptying dumpsters is an issue. You know, when you try to talk to your company about that. Daytime only, yeah. <laughs> and it's commercial anyway. So there's yeah, there's no residential there. anywhere really very near at all. So. I was not at the most recent ZBA meeting, but I was at a previous one. Sure, and I know that they went over a lot of. Things like lighting and issues. That we we are, submitted all of that at the right, wall. but those, yeah. those are the kind of things that I don't know. If, well, I want to say it's not in their wheelhouse. It's more ours, but that's okay. I think they don't. If well, you want to discuss it, so. we can go ahead. So that way, we're prepared for next time. But I, I think yeah. we got that all covered now. Just have them down there and downward lighting, those kind of things. Yeah, that's all. That's yeah. all. I have all that present. Yep. All been that's submitted, it. all reviewed. So. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this should be a nice easy one. So yeah, yeah, let's yeah. do that with the concom and okay. try to do it in July, and then you're off and running. Then. All right, mm -hmm. sounds good. Just I, one more. I just like to, to caution you to to look at and talk about that existing drain and where it dumps, yeah. and also you know the removal of that grass and whatever you put there, because one of the big issues that we would also have is if you just park things on the grass and it gets muddy, and those vehicles come out on the road, 
we're going to hear about that too because you mm -hmm. can't sure. bring the mud onto the highway. So, so. Yeah, we're going to have real cut, short type grass, probably more like a golf course, high impact. So that way, it's not going to be as much of an issue. Right. But if uh -oh. the subsoil, I guess what I'm saying is, if subsoil was loamy at all, right. you know, it'll still get muddy and then. But most of the vehicles that are going to be parked are going to be staying there. They're going to be that's going to be the display Sales area. area. They're not moving around. Right. They're they're going to sit there until somebody buys them. They're not. There's not going to be a lot of traffic coming in out of the site. At all, and we can always rinse the tires off with water if that's the case. Okay. All right. So we. Uh, so you. Your main thing is to con come, and then we'll get a schedule together with them. Right. And it looks like it'll probably be that early July. Okay. That'd be great. Good. 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 All right. Thanks for coming. Today. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody? She's with us actually. Comments? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And you did. And you. You signed. You've signed. In, everybody right? signed in. Yes. In fact, we need to get this card. So. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll take one from you too. You Actually, give it to Paul. Do you want the light bulb? Thank you. Yeah. He's our man. He, 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 Paul lets us all know who's here. No, I, I just wanted you to be aware of all. Okay. Great. Just did a. Uh, if we wanted to do a little follow-up with affordable senior housing, the past year we've spent time on 55 and over, but not necessarily affordable. And I know the select board is doing some things. Other people in town are talking about it. And so I wanted to just question whether the planning board wanted to have, like we did with the housing production plan, we had a, I believe it was like a subcommittee of the planning board who had meetings. They were public meetings. And so they were, it's, it's not a new town committee. It's it, subcommittee of ours right. that could help move things forward and maybe bring in some more folks from the public. Um, is that of interest? Or? So what is what is the, the plan? time to be talking about affordable housing point. was when you were granting waivers to this guy. You know, you gave those away. So is there a plan for the senior center? I've heard of some stuff going on. That's what I don't know. There's a lot the of stuff going on. The select board talks about it. We talk yeah. about it. And so what I'm wondering is if there should be a more of a central place. Um, the, the, the conversation that the select board have had uh, does focus around, uh, you know, what to do with the old senior uh, center building. And, um, you know, it, it would be a good location to put affordable senior housing. Not right away, but updating our sizes. I wrote down what I had. I think that we can... Give that respect to the It's close to Deerfield. Is that something we should care about? Or? Waitley, hold the public appearance. The Swamp Road special permit to rent one or more trailers on premises located at White Birch. Special isn't, permitting? Isn't White Birch near our board? Isn't that That's not near Swamp Road. Waitley. Right? Where does that? Yeah. You can throw a rock in this out, Deerfield. Yeah, thing. it's pretty close. What, what is, how does Swamp Road get connected to the campground? I didn't understand that. It's Roderick Reed of 25 Swamp Road has lives. applied for a special permit to rent one or more trailers at 214 North Street. So it's, he's, oh, he lives on Swamp he's, Road. It's nothing to do with him. Okay. Sorry, okay, my I problem. see. Okay. I was trying to connect Swamp Road with the... No, no, nothing to do with it. Right. <laughs> That's where he lives. But he wants to rent trailers there. I don't know. It doesn't say anything more than he that. He lives on Swamp Road and he wants to rent trailers, trailers at the right. trailer park. White Birch. Gotcha. Just so you know, the Greenfield has a, has a height limit of 50 feet. And uh, the reason why I know that is because someone's asking for a variance up to 57 feet. And then a bunch of solar things going on in other towns nearby. All right. So no. Yep. Nothing too relevant to us. So anything else uh, to discuss tonight? So um, to set the date for the next meeting, so are we? We're good with the 10th, 10th. and then so we'll hang tight and see what unless CONCOM wants to change it, but we don't have anything else. else. But just as soon as it was on the 10th. All right, and it, it would be that um, we'd have to have a couple emails back and forth to make sure we'd have a quorum if it's not on the if it's not on the tenth because it doesn't it's great to have a joint meeting but if there's not four of us there it doesn't right. help it doesn't help right so. 
All right. Sounds good. Can I move to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.